Hi, my name is Joe Stopka. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development for Tascam, and we are here at Corner Music in Nashville, and we're going to talk about one of our newer products that's uh, doing very well nowadays. It brings back a little bit of the nostalgia of Tascam, and that's our Model 24. Model 24 is kind of unique in that it brings together uh, several different worlds. It brings together a really great analog mixer with a built-in 24-track digital recorder, and yes, it is a multi-channel audio interface, USB audio interface. And so whoever, whatever you're trying to accomplish, whether you want to play a live gig and you want simplicity and great audio quality from the analog side, and you want to record multi-track audio but don't want to hook up your computer, you can do that on this onto an SD card. And yet, if you are savvy and you want to work in, a, in the computer-based recording, you can do that as well, or any combination of those things. So I'll just take you through this a little bit so you can get an idea of flavor what the mixer's all about. First of all, there are 16 uh, mic pre's on here. 12 of them are mono, mic, or line inputs, and those first 12 also have a one-knob compressor on them, so it's really easy to use. You don't get into too much trouble, and you can do some control of the dynamics of, that, of your input. The last four channels that have mic inputs are also stereo line inputs, so you can either use the four mic inputs that are mono, or you can use the stereo line inputs, and that gives you some expandability. So if you had a separate, let's say, submixer for keyboards or maybe drums, you could just feed it into the stereo inputs, and that obviously will expand your ability to add more channels to this. As I go down the channel, you have your gain control, and then you also have a low cut filter or high pass filter, however you like to select it. On the first two channels, we also have a, a, a line selector to go for instrument level. So if you wanted to plug a bass guitar or a guitar directly into the line input, that would switch the level or the impedance to match up with the electric guitar or bass. Also, on those first two channels, we have analog inserts. So if you want to insert your favorite processor, like either a effects device or a compressor or something like that, you could do that on the first two channels. As I go down below the gain control and the, uh, the selector for the low cut filter, we also have input selector. And this is where it gets kind of interesting because you can either put, slip it into the live input, which is just your live input as you would be using it for a gig. You can go over to the PC, which would be the USB return, so you can bring tracks back via that. And then you could also switch it over to the MTR, which is the multi-track recorder that's built right into the Model 24. Then right below that, like I said earlier, on the first 12 channels is the one knob compressor. And then right after that, we get into the equalizer section for each of the channels. On the first 12 channels, we have three band EQ. There's um, the mid band is sweepable. So you have a lot of flexibility in those first 12 channels with that equalizer. Right below that, you have a series of auxiliary sends. The first two are mono auxiliary sends that feed master uh, mono uh, aux outputs over in your master section. Typically, that's going to be used either for a wedge or foldback uh, monitor mix, or uh, maybe a, a mono, two different mono in ear mixes, however you choose to use that. The last aux send actually feeds a built in uh, effects processor, digital effects processor that has 16 presets. We'll cover that in a little bit. Then right below that, you get your pan control for your stereo left, right. Below that, you'll have the uh, actually record function button. So if you take a look at that, I'm actually arming that, and you'll be able to see. You, the one thing that's really neat about this is you can record all 24 tracks separately onto the MTR uh, simultaneously. When you go to overdub mode, you, you're able to actually overdub up to eight channels. What's great about that is that if you have a drum kit, typically six to eight mics on a drum kit, so if you needed overdub drums, overdub drums, you wouldn't have a problem doing that. Generally, I think most people are going to overdub a guitar part or maybe a vo couple vocal parts or you know, maybe percussion or something like that, horn section. You're never going to exhaust eight tracks for overdubbing. Right after that is the mute switch. You can see I'm lighting up the mute switch so you can mute any of the channels. So when you're, you're mixing or maybe on a break, you can mute your channels if you're doing a live gig. Below that, we have a full 100, meter, 100 millimeter fader. Sorry about that. And uh, it gives you lots of flexibility and control. Then uh, on, below that, 
you have two s switches that allow you to either route the channel directly to the master output or to a submix. So typically what I do is if I have drums in here and I have six or eight mics on the drums, I'll put them into the sub, get the balance between those eight channels, and then I'll use the sub mix master to uh, actually control the overall level of that grouping of instruments. By the way, uh, on that sub mix, you can then assign that sub mix to the main output. So that's how that would work there. And then finally, right below the, uh, the, uh, the routing switches, is a PFL, that stands for pre-fader listen. So that means you'll listen to everything before the fader. So if you have that engaged, you get a light over here that indicates that you have the pre-fade listen in, in mode. So if you're wondering why you can't hear your other tracks, just look over there and you'll see that lights on and say, oh, there it is, one of these buttons is pressed down. You can see I've disengaged that. So that's the first 12 channels. When we get over to these next four channels, there you, uh, once again, we have four mono mic inputs or two or stereo inputs on these four channels. Again, gain control, you have your low cut filter, you have your channel routing uh, inputs, I should say input routing, whether it's live, PC, or off the MTR. And then on stereo channels, we have three band EQ, they're only fixed EQs. And the reason why is because if you do have a stereo signal in there, having a sweepable EQ in the mid actually might cause some phasing issues, and that's why we fix the frequency in the mid. And then again, you're, you're, uh, you have your auxiliary routing, your first two mono ones, and then your effects then. And then below that is the same as the rest of the mixer where you have your record, your uh, mute, your faders, and then the, your master output and sub output and PFL. Now, one of my favorite cha uh, channels on this is a Bluetooth channel. Yes, that's right. You can actually set this up to receive Bluetooth uh, signals. Uh, I'll give you an example how that's really used well is that maybe you have uh, during your break you could play some music off of a mobile device. That's really kind of neat off of Spotify or YouTube or whatever. But one, one of the things that we found uh, in the group that I play with is that when we want to learn a new cover song, we can actually stream it off of our phone or whatever our source is into there and when we're, we can mix it and play live along with the track so we can try to replicate that track as accurately as we're trying to achieve. So that's really nice. Also on that Bluetooth channel, you have two additional stereo line inputs. One stereo set is on the RCA and one is on an eighth inch MIDI mini plug so uh, I'm sorry eighth inch stereo mini plug now one thing about this channel is that all three of those sources the Bluetooth and the two stereo inputs are actually live simultaneously and they're all at unity gain so you could actually mix several si signals together on that one channel and you would adjust typically adjust the volume on one of the devices like your mobile device from that device to mix it in with what are the other stereo sources so if you're running out of channels you always have the, uh, the option of engaging those particular channels Okay, so we've kind of gone through the input section. Let's go over to the master section. We'll start down at the bottom in this case. Uh, you have your master faders from the stereo master, your two mono uh, auxiliary masters, and then your subgroup masters right there as well. As I mentioned earlier, you can take your subgroup and assign it to the main, so then that subgroup, whether it's your drums or guitars or vocals, can then be fed over to your master level. Again, you have PFL, I'm sorry, in this case, it's not PFL, but it's AFL on the output. So you would engage that again. It's gonna give you an indication light up here. So that helps you out to understand, like, why can't I hear the rest of the things? Because I have this AFL button. I'm gonna take that out and you'll see the button goes out. Right above that, oh, by the way, on those master faders, you also have mute. So you can mute those mono and also the subgroup. And same thing with the main output. We also have the ability to engage a button that allows you to play the two-track master off the recording into, uh, into the uh, output of the, uh, the Bluetooth channel. So if you've mixed all your tracks onto the SD card, you will have the ability to listen back to your master mix. So you're probably wondering why we call this a 24. Well, it's actually, you have 12 mono, then you have four stereos, that gets you to 19 and 20, and then you have your Bluetooth Bluetooth channel, which is 21 and 22, 23 and 24 are your master mix. Every time you go into the record mode, even if you don't have any of your channels in record mode, it is always recording a master two track mix, which is, which is kind of neat. So you can kind of, you know, listen back to how your mixes are going in that case. Let's go up here to the effects section here. 
you have uh, the ability to select the various different 16 channels of effects, or I should say 16 presets of effects. And then there is one more additional control that allows you to toggle over to adjust how much of that particular effect you want overall, uh, affecting the overall mix. And you can also take those effects and assign, actually send as part of that effect, like a reverb or delay, over to your mono mix. So if you wanted to hear a little bit of reverb back in your monitor mix, you could do that by just bringing the levels up there. And then there's a master, overall master level of that effects. Right below the effects device, you have the ability to control your PFL, AFL level. And then you also have control room level and headphone level. And uh, up above, I'll, I'll show you where those connectors are that these two feed. So right above that section where the effects are is the master, is where we have the multi-track recorder. You record onto an SD card and the, you get all 24 tracks. That's the, the 21, or 22 inputs plus your left, right master. They record onto an SD card. And by the way, when you do pull the SD card out, if you took it out and then you plugged it into your computer to, to, uh, to shuttle those tracks over into your computer for maybe some post editing in a DAW or for to uh, archive those files, you'll notice that you have 22 different tracks and then an interleaved stereo 23 and 24 track file. So anyways, full functionality of a typical tape recorder or any type of digital recorder where you have stop, play, pause, record buttons. We also have when you can, you can switch over to look at your metering. So for playing tracks, you could actually see that going on there. And I'll, I'll turn this on and just hit some uh, playback so you can see some tracks going here or some metering going on here shortly. We'll let that go and you'll see the meters come up here shortly. But you can see individual channel metering right here in this window. Uh, there's also the ability to label the tracks and name the tracks alphanumerically as well. And uh, then you also have the ability to import tracks and export tracks as well. By the way, this will record up to 24-bit 24, 40, uh, 48K sample rate. So it gives you a nice good quality. Right above that section, you see a graphic equalizer. The graphic equalizer is kind of interesting because you can use it for both mixing for the main and or you can use it to assign it to the monitors. Generally, what I've been using is these, I would use it to ring out monitors for, so you can get more gain before feedback in your wedges for a live application. Right above that is all your outputs. So you see you got a headphone output, control room left and right. You also have a, a foot switch, which allows you to have, use our FS1 foot switch, so you can use it for punch in, punch out, or play, or stop. And you have your sub outputs that's fed by this sub output here. And um, you're automatically, when you, uh, when you assign the subgroup to the mains, it just goes over to the main output. But let's say you wanted to submix your drum tracks or a, a, an assortment of tracks. You could actually take a patch cable, plug it into here, and then take it into a stereo input, and then open up the other tracks that you previously recorded on. Aside from that, you have your auxiliary outputs, and then you have your main master outputs, and that would be typically used to feed your, your PA system. By the way, if you want to find out more information, you can come over here to Corner Music and, and meet some of the guys here. They can help you out with this. And if you want to find out more about this product on our website, just go to Tascam.com. Thanks a lot.